Hey everyone, it's the Detective back again with another video, and today it's finally time to open up the new Bakugan Armored Alliance Baku Gear Packs. Now, I'm going to open up all three of these in this video and just present my initial impressions on both the toys for the Baku Gear and the Bakugan figures themselves. And then I'm going to do a separate video just analyzing the competitive value of these packs. Of course, we do have Pegatrix Ultra here. One thing that I'm really glad that they did is the packaging. The packaging is all new, it's far more clear, you can see inside of it easier, and also with like, you know, like the battle packs and the starter packs, they actually tell you which Bakugan you get, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have, you don't have to memorize the ball forms in, in, in order to figure out. There are six Bakugan in this first wave of packs, it's literally just the awesome ones in Nilius. I do really like how it kind of shows it right there, Chaos Lightning Striker is the name of that Baku here. Here's Dragonoid, and we're gonna open up him first because I am just so excited for this version. And then you get to the Magma Blaster. And then here is the Howl Core version. And you get the Mecha Claws, or Mecha Claws. So yeah, without further ado, let's open up this Dragonoid, and then we'll go to Pegatrix, and then Howl Core. All right, so let's bust right in. I'm just gonna make a cut in between each one. And yeah, really exciting. Of course, I haven't actually opened up one of these since, uh, since the Invitational, of course, because everyone just got one of them at the Invitational, so I'm really, really excited. So, let's throw that onto the ground. Oh, I also like how the, uh, the cards just slide out easily. They, they're not, they're probably not going to bend because, you know, they're not going to be stressed by the tape or anything. So, Let's start out with the cards, and I'm going to delve into these a little bit more for the uh, competitive analysis. But we have Dragonite Ultra, Shield and Red Fist, 902. Really cool. Really powerful as well. And Pyru Hammer for 6. I actually think I pulled at least one, of, one copy of this in my packs that I got, but I guess I have another copy, which is pretty cool. 100 B power, but it's 12 damage. That is, that's just crazy. And then for the cores, of course, the new redesigned cores. We're really excited to have these. I think it's actually the first time that I've actually owned a Red Fist. So the Red Fist, it's plus five damage and minus one cost for Baku Gear. So when you see this symbol, and then of course, minus a number, and then energy symbol, it means that a Baku Gear costs one less to play, which is pretty cool. And then you have a shield, 200B and minus two cost to Baku Gear. Really cool. So I got my scissor, and let's start out with Dragonoid himself. And I'm really excited for this because the new, there he is, check that out. I did, of course, I saw all these designs at the Invitational, but I didn't really get super, super hands-on with them. And again, this is kind of like a reaction video. These are these are not spring-loaded for some reason. I thought that they were, but they're, they're just manual, but that's fine. They come out really easily, and you know, some people might actually prefer that they're open. I am, I know that some people might disagree, but I am going to go ahead and say that this is the single best Dragonoid design that we've ever gotten. Just, it, well, I'm sure that most people can agree that it's better than the ones that we got, design-wise. It's better than the ones that we got for Battle Planet. And I, I honestly think that it just looks, it's, it just looks more visually appear, appealing than even anything that we got in Battle Brawlers, the original series. This Drago just looks so good, just get a look at that detail. The detail is just fantastic. The sculpting on the head, look at that. It's just so nice. You got the little feet in the front, little manual parts. So the horn is also manual. These are manual. So how does this close? I mean, I did I did have experience with this at the Invitational, but I just hope that I'm doing this correctly. So I suppose this, oh, the wings go in first. Oh, that wasn't too hard. And, uh, yeah, again, I will do a whole competitive analysis and, you know, rolling him out and stuff. And we'll do a separate video for these Bakugan. But let's actually take a look at the Baku gear, which is the, the Magma Blaster, I believe, if I'm not getting that wrong again. So, key thing about gear is that you have the two smaller kind of peg connections, which peg into the, uh, the side over here. And then you have the main magnetic connection. Now, Baku Gear are just aesthetic. Um, I don't know. I, I have a feeling that Magma Blaster 
or magma cannon, whatever it is, is actually a card. But as you can see, this is Pyro Hammer. This toy, oh shoot, this toy is purely for display and collection purposes. There's no other reason to have this. It's just basically for fun and, you know, for the younger audience. This is not, if you're a Bakugan Pro player, this is not really a Bakugan Pro toy. Um, in the full review that I'm going to be doing tomorrow or in a few days, I will be strictly talking about the, uh, the Bakugan Pro aspects of this. Oh, I did it wrong. Uh, but it's very, very sim It's very, very simple. It really reminds me of one of the the uh, battle gear from Dragonoid Colossus from the original series. It does look very, very nice though. And again, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but these smaller peg connections actually work with uh, the core Bakugan. So that's basically it for Dragonoid. Let's move on to Pegatrix. All right, so we have the Pegatrix here. I actually adjusted the camera a little bit so that once I actually open it, it'll be easier to get a nice look at it. But I'm really excited for this one because um, Pegatrix has a really powerful Evo. I'm honestly just going to stab this. There we go. That should do it. Um, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it is a double shield, which is going to be crazy for the pro game. Really excited for that. Uh, it is a double shield, and... Double Shield was the first deck that I actually built, and the shields have already ha have always had a place in my heart, basically. So I'm just I'm just ecstatic, honestly, for this. Both you know Pegatrix, Chaos Pandox, really excited for that. But again, this is just in a boxing and first impression. So Pegatrix Ultra 501 Double Shield. Ooh, let's zoom in. There we go. Really nice art. And then Heyo Bracers. I already have one of this, but this is honestly a pretty great gear. It's six for 1,000 B and zero damage. I actually use this against Fire Lina. I, I did end up use it, um, losing, but I did have a single copy of this and I used it up against Fire Lina in order to win one of my battles towards the end of our game. Hail Bracers is pretty rad. I really like it, especially, you know, with the cores that reduce the gear costs. And speaking of which, plus 300 B and minus one to gear. This is, this is basically the new meta because there was already a plus 300 B core, but Unfortunately, those cores are basically useless now because everyone's going to be running these. So, really excited for that. And then, plus 150 and minus 2. Both of these honestly seem like very, very good Baku cores. So, that's very, very nice for, you know, shields and such. And here we go. Pegatrix Ultra looks pretty nice. Um, when a first, like, the first, like, prototypes and such were being leaked, I really, really was not a fan of this design. But... Having it in a hand and also, you know, seeing it at the Invitational, I honestly love it. It looks really nice. Now, the Battle Planet Pegatrix Ultra, it was kind of like this. It was kind of rearing up on the hind legs. So I actually really appreciate that they're kind of giving us an Ultra Pegatrix that's like this. The wings fold out. That looks amazing. The only unfortunate thing, though, is that, you know, if you kind of if you fold up the wings and then you fold up the little hooves in the back... It literally just looks like Battle Planet Core Pegatrix with some holes in the side. I mean, honestly, and that's that's a little disappointing, but you know, just with a few manual parts, I think that it does. It really takes shape, and honestly, with with all the the legs all opened up and the wings open, like it honestly looks really nice. I mean, that that honestly, I honestly might like this more than Battle Planet Pegatrix Ultra. All right, let's figure out how to fold this up. So I just I just unfolded everything. I guess now that, you know, or the camera's closer to the ground, I'll actually roll it out. I'm assuming it's similar to Battle Planet version. Is it just like this? Yep, there it is. All right, let's roll it out. There we go. That's pretty cool. See, so yeah, not the biggest slip, but I really, really like this. Really, really cool design. Let's get that Baku gear out. So this Baku gear is called Chaos Lightning Striker. Pretty cool. Again, I'm not totally sure if they have cards or not, but I, I feel like I feel like it goes like this actually. So you know, you get these little add-ons to the side. Looks really, really cool. I hope that I'm doing this right. This is just how it kind of looks to me. Um, so this is kind of the actual gear itself, and bam. See, so, yeah, it's very, very reminiscent actually of the Magma Blaster, but unlike the Magma Blaster, it's a little shorter and it kind of just folds up at an angle, so it just kind of it sticks up far above her head. So yeah, there's Pegatrix and Drago. But let's open up the final Baku gear pack that I have, which is Howlcore Ultra. Alrighty, and this is the last Baku gear and Baku on Ultra pack. And it's Howlcore. 
and Howl Car, similarly to Pegatrix, was a design which I really did not like upon first seeing the uh, leaked prototypes because unfortunately a bunch of people, you know, like in China, they got prototypes or like unfinished painted models from like factories and stuff. And, um, um, we, you know, we got pictures that surfaced of them. And I really disliked a lot of the new Ultras. I really disliked, based on just those pictures, I really didn't like Trox, I really didn't like Cavalcore, and I really didn't like Pegatrix, but I already have Trox Ultra, and if you've seen that video, I really do like the, the new Trox. And, uh... Oh, shoot, we gotta... I really didn't like the new Pegatrix, and now that I actually have it, I do like the new Pegatrix, so... I'm hoping that I will like the new Howlcore. Now, I did see Howlcore, of course, at the Invitational. I didn't get the best look of it, but I did see it. Uh, I believe Fang Shaman actually had a Pyrus version of this, of Howlcore. Alright, so again, we're just going to throw this aside. Let's zoom in here. So, Cores. Magic Shield and Red Fist. That is already pretty promising. 5 damage and minus 1 to play gear. That's the same core that came in the Drago. And 400B and minus 2. Wow, that's actually pretty good, I think. I don't know if there's a better version of a Magic Shield that reduces gear costs, but that's pretty nice. Abelcore Ultra, Magic Shield, and Red Fist, of course, 405. Not the best, not the worst. Dark Daggers, I'm pretty sure I have a playset of this already, but now I have another copy. Uh, 4 to play, 205, pretty nice. Alright, so let's get a closer look at Abelcore. So, firstly... He doesn't have wings, which is good because Howlcore doesn't, like, he's a Cerberus. You can even see in the card, he doesn't have wings. The original Howlcore Ultra had wings. And additionally, what the original Howlcore Ultra had was some very, very bad Alto Brontes disease. If you don't know what that is, it's basically where an aspect of the physical Bakugan uh, figure kind of sticks out of the ball form and it makes rolling it possibly a little bit tricky. And it also makes the actual ball form look a little bit ugly. And I don't think that this version has it. I'm um, just looking at it. It doesn't seem like he has... Oh, he's, he's, yeah, these are manual parts. The uh, the front feet appear to be manual. But other than that, it seems like everything else is actually um, spring-loaded, which is pretty nice. That was a fail. Um, let's see if I can do this. Nope. There we go. I'll get better at it. I'm kind of rolling from a weird angle. But yeah, there it is. Uh, what do I think about it? It's definitely not as bad as I thought. It still isn't the best. I do like how they kind of made the faces a little bit more kind of accurate to the way that he actually looks on the show. The original Howlcore honestly looked like a dragon. When we first started seeing Battle Planet leaks, like over a year ago, like I think it was like what, like September of 2018? It's pretty crazy how long it's been. But back when those leaks start, uh, first started showing up, I thought that Howlcore was a dragon. I didn't realize that it was a Cerberus until we saw the card for it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, how does this go on? I, I really hope I'm... I really hope I'm doing this right. Oh, there we go. Wow. So yeah, this one is really, really cool looking. Now, what I think this is supposed to be is it's just supposed to represent that his claws are just getting bigger. Like, these are supposed to be claws. Um, I really like that though. It really reminds me of one of the, uh, the Battle Gears from the original series, and that would be the one that Aquamos used. I don't remember the name of it. I, I I absolutely have no idea how these are supposed to go on. So this was like the first time that I've ever had an experience with them. But yeah, um, it looks pretty cool. It looks a little weird at the same time, but there's Havocore. So yeah, everyone, that was my unboxing and first impression of the Havocore, Dragonoid, and Pegatrix with Baku gear. Pretty excited. These Bakugan already look really, really great. I'm super excited for the Baku gear, of course, in game. I have yet to build the deck using the old cards and the new cards. My Invitational deck is still as is. I do plan to do a deck profile of it sometime soon. And I also definitely want to do a video just about these three Bakugan in particular and about the competitive value and the competitive, my personal opinion on how they can be competitively viable. And I'm definitely extremely excited to do that considering the fact that you actually get some pretty good Baku cores, at least by the looks of it, in these packs. Pretty much all of these Baku cores that these came with seem to have some sort of use and i'm really glad most of them you know they they did have the baku the baku gear effect which is definitely very very helpful and it's a, definitely a good benefit that you know someone who 
doesn't have any of the new stuff can just get one of these and they already get you know a good bakugan the new gear and some great cores and of course a card to use of the baku gear in their deck i really do appreciate that and i'm really really excited to you know build decks with these in the future but anyway guys thank you so much for watching this has been the detective and i'll see you in the next one peace out